Do you need fancy grow lights like these to grow your microgreens? Or would you get more bang for your buck using cheap LEDs? Well, in this new series that we're starting around lighting, we're gonna answer exactly those questions. This is another part of an ongoing series where we're testing out lights to see how they affect the microgreens taste, appearance, and growth. So let's get into the details of each light. For this experiment, we're gonna be using four different types of LED lights, so let's get started on the top shelf. On our top shelf, we have a Barina LED light that is a T5 20 watt 6500K light. Each one of these lights draws 19.3 watts and 0.16 amps. For all three lights, we are drawing a total of 58.7 watts and 0.49 amps. On to our second shelf. These are the same T5 20 watt 6500K lights, except there are just three more of them. All six lights draw a total of 119 watts and 1.01 amps. It costs a total of 24 cents per day to run these lights. Now onto our third shelf. These are also Barina, but these are a different spectrum. These are what we call blurple or full spectrum pink lights. These are T5 42 watt lights. Each one of these lights has a total draw of 41 watts and 0.39 amps. All combined with all three lights, there's a total wattage pool of 123 watts and 1.04 amps. The total cost to run these per day is 25 cents. On to our fourth and last shelf. These are also 42 watt T5 lights. Though these are also classified as full spectrum, they are more pink in their appearance. Each one of these lights also draw 41 watts and 0.35 amps. So it pulls the exact same watt and amps as the shelf above it, which is 123 watts combined and 1.04 amps combined. Now let's talk about the power on all of these lights. To measure the light output of each one of these different sets of lights, I've got a quantum flux meter from Apogee Instruments that measures the PAR. So this is what we're gonna be using to measure. You'll also notice that we have black trays on each one of our shelves, and that's so that we can have a baseline for measuring and make sure that everything's consistent for the measurement. So I'll go ahead and grab my PAR meter and let's get started on the top shelf. So I'm gonna place this in the middle of our top shelf and you can see that I'm getting about 89 PAR in the middle. If I go towards the back edge where it's reflecting more off the wall, I touch about 101. Coming towards the front edge where there's gonna be less light, I'm getting about 75 PAR, 74. Onto our second shelf. Again, placing it in the middle on top of this tray, I'm getting about 197 or 198 PAR. If I take this back towards the back end, I'm getting about 187 par, and then towards the front, I'm getting about 144 par. Onto our third shelf. Again, placing it in the middle, I'm getting about 116 par in the middle. Putting that towards the back edge, about 130, and then towards the front edge, about 105. Onto the fourth shelf, we're getting about 150 par in the middle, towards the back, we're getting 164 par, and then towards the front, we're getting about 124, 123 par. I wanna show how far the lights are from the shelves themselves. So from the bottom of the shelf to the light, we're sitting at about eight and a quarter inches. From the top of the trays, we're closer to about six and a half inches. For the top of the plants, we're even shallower, probably about five and a half inches from the lights. That we've measured the light output for each one of these shelves, let's get this crop pulled off the shelf and we'll talk about it in more detail. For this experiment, we have four different trays with all the exact same crop on it. Each one of these trays has been seeded with 25 grams of Rambo radish per tray, and they're all being grown using the exact same medium, which is cocoa coir. They also all have the exact same tray setup. All of these trays went through the exact same germination process, which is three days waited and one day blackout. Now that they have all germinated quite evenly, as you can see, what we're gonna be doing is introducing these into the light. Since we're introducing these into the light, we need to also begin adding nutrients to them. For this experiment, we've chosen to use Ocean Solution, the 2-0-3 blend, because it has given us great results in the past. The only difference between all four of these trays is which shelf they're gonna be placed on. Starting over here is our green label tray, which is going to go on our top shelf. The yellow label tray is going to go on our second shelf. The blue label tray is going to go on our third shelf. And then lastly, the red label tray is going to go on our fourth shelf. I'm gonna go ahead and begin placing all of these trays on their designated shelves, and I'll see you guys in a few days to give you an update. Today is day nine of our Rambo Radish LED lighting test. This radish has been on this shelf now for about five days, so what I'm gonna do is pull this all off the shelf and let's take a closer look at each one of these. Starting with our top shelf here, you will remember this is our green tray. Looks a little crazy on that one. 
And then our second shelf, which was six of the LEDs. That is a huge difference just between these two right here. The third shelf, which is the Blurple 42 watt LEDs. Oh man, these things are, these are big. These look pretty comparable. And then finally our fourth shelf. Should I carefully ease this out? Wow. Each one of these are pretty overgrown. I gotta move my table slightly here. <laughs> so all these trays are very abundant, though I would say the growth from first glance looks best on the bottom three shelves. All three of the shelves below this one did have a lot more par and a lot more light output. So I'm seeing a lot more consistent growth on all these three trays. Let's start over here with our top shelf, which was three of the 20 watt LEDs. The growth does look really great. The cotyledon sizes are really nice, though I would say that it's very um, sporadic in its growth. The coloration overall on this tray looks fairly similar to the others, though I would say that the colors look darker on the others. I would say that this tray has probably a reduced chlorophyll concentration compared to the others, though I am happy with the growth overall on this tray. The product does look quite nice, just a little skimpy and a little tall, maybe a little bit lanky for my taste. Onto the second shelf. This is the shelf that had six of the 20 watt LEDs. So three more than this shelf above it. I love the growth on this tray right here. It is very consistent. The cotyledon size is beautiful. The coloration on all of this crop is really, really nice. Even underneath the canopy, everything does look quite nice. So I'm very happy with adding three additional lights. I think that is a pretty huge difference just between these two. And you can see how even in the same spectrum, just adding a little bit more lumens or lux or par, just a bit more light output will provide quite a substantial difference in growth. Onto our third tray. This is our Blurple LEDs and this one is the full spectrum. Overall, I'm very happy with the growth. The cotyledons look beautiful, very sizable. The growth is very consistent across and I'm not seeing anything that looks too crazy on this one. Onto the fourth tray. This was another one of the full spectrum LEDs, but the coloration on this one was a bit more pink compared to the purple of the one above it. And the growth on it, again, is really, really nice. I'm not seeing anything that is a bit more advantageous than the others. The purples are beautiful, the cotyledons are nice and sizable, and I'm very happy with the coloration and the growth overall on this entire tray. I think it did a really great job. All four of these trays did great. I would say that the three lower shelves with more light output did the best because I'm not so happy with the growth here on this uh, 20 watts, the, just three of the 20 watt LEDs that we had on our top shelf. Because the growth is so high, low, and the cotyledon size is pretty mixed, we have some small ones mixed with some big ones, it just seems a bit more all over the place. I'm still very happy with this product though. I think that this is a very usable product. It's just appearance wise, I think that these have definitely outdone that. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get all four of these trays harvested off camera because it's gonna take me a little bit of time to do that. And I'm gonna set some aside from each group as I harvest and we're gonna collect the harvest weight and then we can talk about the appearance and the taste after I've harvested everything. So I'll see you guys in just a few moments once I've done that. I have finished harvesting all four of the trays, so let's discuss their harvest weights. Starting with our top shelf, which was the 320 watt LEDs, we had a total harvest weight of 373 grams. The shelf below it, which was the 620 watt LEDs, we had a total harvest weight of 390 grams, so 17 grams higher than the shelf above. Onto the third tray, this was our Blurple 42 watt LEDs. We had a total harvest weight of 410 grams, which was 20 grams higher than the shelf above it. And then lastly, our bottom shelf, which was the 42 watt pink full spectrum LEDs. We had a total harvest weight of 405 grams, which is five grams lower than the shelf above it. So I'm very happy with the harvest weights overall on all these trays. Though I would say that I love the appearance more on the three lower trays that had more light output to them. Lastly, let's talk about the cost for each one of these trays. The first shelf had a total cost to grow of 15 cents. The shelf below it had a total cost of 30 cents because it had doubled the lights. The shelf below it had a total cost of 32 cents. And that was the same for the shelf below it because they both had the same wattage pool. The winner for the appearance, I would say, stays between these three lower groups because of their ample cotyledon size as well as the coloration on all of the stems and their uniform growth. It makes for much prettier presentation when everything is the same height. 
Now let's move into the taste testing. We're gonna start over here with our 20 watt LEDs. All right, let's taste this. Radish first thing in the morning is lovely. Okay, there's a good spice to it. It's very juicy. It's crunchy, but not too crunchy. It's not very fibrous. Overall, it's packed with flavor. I'm very satisfied with the taste of that top shelf. Let's move to the shelf just below that one, which had three additional lights. All right, shelf number two. There's a lot of radish. Okay, flavors, spiciness, it's very abundant. Crunch is there, same thing, it's soft enough that it kind of dissolves away in the mouth as well. Overall, I'm very, very happy with that. I think that's a great tasting product. On to the third shelf. I love the coloration on these. Really nice crunch. Very smooth tasting. I'm not noticing as much of that initial burst of spicy, but the spicy is definitely there. I can feel it creeping on the back of my tongue and all across my tongue right now. Overall, I'm very happy with that taste as well. So far, I love everything. Let's taste the very last shelf. I feel like that was a lot crunchier than all the other groups. Wow. It's got a very nice crunch to it. Spiciness is still, wow, it's really nice. I would say that's almost spicier than everything else. Okay. As for the most unique flavor, I'm gonna say that this last shelf, the pink LED 42 watts did the best because there was a very great crunch to it and it also did have a spice that I wasn't used to with the other three trays. So overall, winner and taste, it's gonna be that last shelf. Now I'm gonna get some coffee from my mouth and I'll see you guys in just a moment. For the overall winner of this grow, I'm gonna to have to go with our 42 watt pink Barina full spectrum LED grow lights. They had the best growth, appearance, and taste of all the other four groups. So I'm gonna to have to go with those as the winner. That concludes this experiment. I think that everything turned out really great, though I would say that the bottom three shelves were the clear winners here because they had the better light output and it gave us better harvest weight, bigger cotyledon sizes, and overall the appearance of the bottom three shelves just looked the best. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give us a thumbs up. If you dislike this video, give us a thumbs down. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the section below. And we'd love to get those answered for you as soon as we possibly can. Our Instagram and our Facebook are both at On The Grow Farms. And we have a website now that we're actually gonna be revamping soon, which is www.onthegrow.net. That's all for today. Keep on believing.